How do we go from the text deep lizard to the binary representation, which consists solely of zeros and ones? Let me show you how. The key to understanding how we transform text into binary is to first understand character encoding and then to understand positional numeral systems. Once you have these topics on lock, text to binary becomes a breeze. If you're not following the data science playlist, I highly recommend you check it out. If you have any trouble with these concepts in this video, go back and review the character encoding video and the positional numeral system video. These videos will get you pumped up from a knowledge perspective. For now, let's go from text to binary and back. I'm here in a notebook that I've created to show you how this works. Link to this one is in the description. The first section lets us go from text to binary, and the second section lets us go from binary to text. In both cases, you can see Unicode in the middle, which is why we need to know about character encoding before we can fully understand this transformation between text and binary. Let's see this in action. We'll just type the text deep lizard, so it will be converted and we can see how it's represented in binary. Now this is what deep lizard looks like in binary. The process of converting from text to binary involves two steps. The first step is to convert each character in the text to its corresponding Unicode character code. This gives us a numerical representation of each character. The next step is where we use all of the knowledge we gain by exploring how numbers are represented using positional numeral systems. We convert each base 10 character code to its base 2 binary representation. We've seen before that computers only work with numbers under the hood. By under the hood, we mean the computer hardware. And by numbers, we mean numerals from the base two binary positional numeral system. As programmers, the textual and numerical data we work with inside computer programs is ultimately translated to binary so the computer's hardware can work with it. All right, great, so let's check this out. We have 10 characters, 10 Unicode character codes in decimal form, and 10 binary binary numerals. Something you'll notice about the 10 binary numerals is that each numeral has exactly eight digits. With binary numerals, we call each digit a bit. Each bit can only take on one of two values, either a zero or a one. And for this reason, if we are looking at a sequence of bits, like each of these bit sequences, we can think about each bit in the sequence as being on or off. If the bit is a one, it is said to be on. And if the bit is a zero, it is said to be off. When we have two states like this, on and off, it becomes pretty straightforward to represent these states in the physical world, literally physically. Like a light switch, for example. Anything that can represent on and off in the real world can represent a bit. If we have multiple light switches, something interesting becomes possible. With multiple light switches, we have multiple digits, and with digits, we can represent some range of numbers. To do it, we just combine the switches and use the base two binary positional numeral system. The switches are our bits or our base two digits. And if we can represent numbers, then we can also represent text. And this is how computers do it. Imagine shrinking the light switches down to a microscopic size and having billions of them. This is essentially what is happening on a computer chip. If we have just eight bits, we can count up to 255. If we wanted to count higher than 255 in base 2, we would need more than 8 digits. So with 8 bits, we can count up to 255. This also means that we can represent 255 distinct things, like characters for example. Before Unicode, 255 used to be enough to represent most of the characters we use. For this reason, sequences of 8 bits became commonplace, and so a sequence of 8 bits has a special name. 8 bits is said to be a byte. 
You can see how the text Deep Lizard is transformed into 10 bytes. One byte, also known as 8 bits, for each character. So we can say that the text Deep Lizard takes 10 bytes to be represented. One byte for each character. Try this. Open a regular notepad and type the text Deep Lizard, then save the file. Close the file, then right click on it and choose Properties. For the file size, you'll see 10 bytes. The number of bytes needed for representing a single character can sometimes take more than one byte. It just depends on the character and the encoding. So keep that in mind. Let's see now how we go from binary to text. If we want to go from binary to text, we just have to convert each binary number to a character code first. Then we can convert the character codes into the characters the codes represent. Be sure to give this notebook a try yourself. Type your name in here and see what it looks like in binary. Once you have this down, you'll have a better understanding of how computers represent data. It's pretty amazing. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.